Good morning, everyone. This is Honeywell, and I'm playing Banished. This is episode 6 of The Perfect Town. In this episode, we're going to get... finish up some odds and ends, and start filling out this portion of the map however I see fit. Um, finish putting in some pastures over here, build up our trade dock, uh, get this marketplace back here finished, our town hall, lots of little projects that we, uh, that we need to finish. We're also going to continue to increase our population, and it is going to start increasing exponentially. We're just about at the point of the game where um, people start starving because they're surprised at how fast their population grows. We'll uh, check out this trader, and then I think we'll talk about marketplaces a little bit. Maybe we'll get some seeds. We still don't have any seeds, and it's year 16. Uh, no, but cattle? I don't even remember what I have. What do I have? Oh, good. I have sheep and chickens, so we want cattle. Thank you. Let's see, how much for six? Six cattle, can we afford six? I think we can, maybe. What is it, like 1,200 or something outrageous? Yes, thank you very much. My gaming mouse broke last night, so I'm using this like cheap $10 mouse until my new one comes and it is a uh, it's very annoying I must say cattle another herdsman oh and our town hall good good um, let's build another house anyway we're already up to 96 members here is the the town hall menu is great. Um, one of the best things about it, I think, is uh, the ability to cycle through each of your buildings. Which is really nice. Up until this point, we you had to kind of uh, go by hand. But uh, that's not the case here. The only thing about this interface that I do not like is that you can't see everybody at once, so I usually stack them like this. And we'll go over this real quick. We have uh, 32 homes, 32 families, 97 citizens, uh, a lot of adults, some students, and a healthy percent of children. Everyone is mostly healthy. We still don't have any, any grains. I think we've traded a few times for some corn or wheat, but until we get... Uh, a steady supply of grains, our health is never going to be perfect. Uh, no thank you, we just bought them. Um, what else? Production, you can see our food, this is the biggie, um, is exactly used and produced. I think later, once we start uh, creating ale, these figures aren't going to be all that reliable, but for now they're nice. And then the all-important inventory. Where did, uh, let's see if our town hall turned out to be as lovely as I thought. Very nice. Okay, so it looks like the major thing we have left queued up is our marketplace. Now, I actually have this um, queued up sooner than I would normally. A good rule of thumb for placing marketplaces is um, every 10,000 in food as you need them. So for your first marketplace, once you hit around, um, you wouldn't place like a second one until you start reaching the uh, 20,000 in food. But because this is such a far away place, 
um, from the rest of rest of my town, I'm going to head in putting in this marketplace anyway. Queue up some houses that aren't going to get built. It still takes forever for anything to get built back here. Good. And even though it says that we have uh, more homes than families, um, students, they're not counting these, uh, the students. But you see, I have 26-year-olds um, that need a house, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with my housing. And I think we might... Hmm so many possibilities let's get over here and that's not what I want to do and develop this section a little bit early ah uh, yeah we need barns and stuff Oh, and here's another uh, thing that I could not find anywhere online, so I had to look at the game files to find. Um, barns hold 6,000 units. Um, marketplaces hold 10,000 units, which is why um, building marketplaces in increments of 10,000 food is a reasonable suggestion. And trading posts now hold a massive 60,000 units um, so so we'll definitely be utilizing those a little later for um, some excess storage the only downside to that is if a tornado comes through and uh, wipes out a swath of your town if it knocks out your marketplace you're only losing 10,000 goods if you're you lose a couple barns you know 12,000 one trading post goes up in flames or gets hit by a tornado and you lose can lose up to 60,000 uh, units of whatever at one go but the trade-off is worth it anyone who has a who's had a town uh, reach the higher populations will agree that storage uh, becomes an issue. And I also like to have it... Um, storage, yes, but in addition to storage, it's... Um, I like to use it as a kind of insurance policy. You know, because one day you have a, a ton of everything, and the next day you run out of tools or people are starving. That's never fun. I also have a I have a few um, a few mods installed. I don't actually I haven't used any of them, but I have the debug menu installed. I also have um, flattened terrain and eventually these little gaps in the roads are going to bother me and I'm going to go in there and use the flattened terrain tool so I can finish the roads. I kind of set up my own my own little system of when it's okay to do that and basically I've come up with as long as it's not
as long as it's only for uh, cosmetic reasons. Seems fair enough. When I first got it, I started, um, when I first installed that mod, I started using it on just about everything. Like, oh, this would look nice here, so let me, uh, let me change the terrain. And that kind of, it ruined it a bit. And back to marketplaces. Our marketplace is finished up here automatically. Um, as soon as you place another market, all of the other vendors seem to, seem to populate it. Um, so you'll want to adjust that. And we are going to try four vendors back here. And we're going to lower this number to four so they're distributed the way I want them to be. And we'll see if those four vendors can't, uh, can't fill up this marketplace. Uh, logs. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Logs are great. Not really. And food. Okay, we're only getting the things that we want, which is good. And we have 336 more. Okay, thank you very much. Food is always appreciated. So since we have a, um, a stockpile of 12,000 food, Each, each marketplace could probably be a little bit more than half full, so I'm going to look for this to get around the 60, the 60% 60 mark. See, and this is low too. We're going to put another vendor on this marketplace. I hate to put all our laborers on this, but one of the bad things about well, good and bad thing about the marketplace is that people are in the radius are going to go here for for everything they need, and if it's not there, eh, that's not so that's not so great. So it looks like right now they're about a quarter full. We'll check back in in a little bit to see if they filled up. If not, we need to adjust the vendors on those. Okay, we unpaused our our trading posts. We'll start building up this area a little bit. Most of it's going to be paused though. And again, because those houses that we have queued up here are so far back there, no one's even really touching them. It'll be a while. Since we'll be buying a lot of the raw materials that we need, stone, iron, and coal, we are definitely going to use these uh, stockpiles here. Wherever I put houses, I want a schoolhouse. Okay. 
And most of the time I want an herbalist as well. I just, those are just basic buildings that I want in every kind of section of my town. We're going to go ahead and split these sheep already. Good, good. And I have more pastures that I want to place over here. I'm also going to be placing a a marketplace. Not now. We're definitely not ready for this yet. Now I like um, placing the largest, the largest size uh, pastures, but um, smaller pastures are great too. So if you have space problems, there's no reason not to um, place smaller. The only thing that you want to be mindful of is um, is making them large enough to be able to split your herds if that's what you want to do. It wasn't already hard enough to see as it is. Snow does not help. Let's try that. Yeah, this mouse is driving me crazy. And that's good enough for now. You know what, maybe I'll put in, since we're having such a problem with, oh well we really don't have the wool to, uh, to accommodate it. I was going to say a tailor, another tailor might be nice since we are having a problem keeping up with, keeping up with that, but it wouldn't really help. And good, good. We have a trading post. Our third trading post. And we are going to be stocking this with some firewood and venison. Let's see what they have. Some seeds, maybe? Uh, no. But, thank you. Another one of these houses down here. Let's see. Yeah, 57. That's about right. 60%. And what about back here? And about 67. So that works too. Now if if this was still around the 20% mark, I would know that I would need more vendors um, in order to, to stock this market. As I fill in the area back here, um, we might need to add more vendors 
but since it's only this small handful of houses, the four vendors are able to handle it. Let's raise that to 5,000. And what is our food at right now? 25? Let's do 35. And what do you have? Stone? Yeah, still minuscule amounts. What was that, 132? Yeah, 132. Okay, thank you very much. And well, I guess I can continue uh, filling out some more in this area. mouse. Kind of took my gaming one for granted. And houses. Here's a, uh, here's something you might noticed, have noticed, um, I'm still building wood houses. Um, stone houses are absolutely um, more fuel efficient than wood houses. Um, but wood right now isn't, isn't a concern. And I want all of this stone available so I can build as fast as I want to. So it's a trade-off that I'm willing to make. Stone houses are better. The the game files um, have it listed as stone houses uh, provide uh, 0.9 warmth for every unit of fuel, and wood houses only get 0.6 warmth for the same amount of fuel. And I actually uh, did a test and debug myself just to be sure. And, and the figure that you commonly hear, um, that wood houses use about 10 more firewood a season, uh, that is, that does work out. I did three seasons and one se two seasons they used, the wood houses used nine more firewood. And the third season was particularly cold, and in that season they used 11 more. So if you're playing on a, um, in harsh conditions with a colder, colder um, winters, you might get more benefit from stone houses than the common, uh, guesstimate that they use 10 more per season but even at 10 more we're so we're using with 36 homes we're using 360 more firewood a season which is well that's that's nothing again once we reach the hundreds of houses it'll become an issue but right now it's not a concern of mine i'll put those figures in the description I'll also put the figures for the trading posts, marketplaces, and barns as well. Because again, that's something that I actually looked for and I couldn't find. So maybe someone else is, uh, is curious about that as well. What is going on here? Am I not... Oh, I'm just messing this up all over.
Good, good. And I'll have a, a fishing dock over here, a line of barns, another fishing dock here. Again, just trying to pick out the nicer portions of the river that'll give a lot of water coverage. And I'll also put in a few tailors over here. Because eventually we'll be over overflowing in wool. So that's something that we'll want to trade. We're going to go ahead and uh, trade wool coats along with our firewood and ale and anything else that we have too much of. another trader, some more firewood. And venison. Great. Once more of this stone is uh, collected, we'll go ahead and put in uh, another two quick forest hubs. And we might as well get these put in as well. A chapel, cemetery, and hospital, along with each mer major area of of a city will get their own chapel, cemetery, and hospital. The hospital is necessary for, for disease. The chapel and cemetery, just because I like it. So we have a chapel and cemetery over here. Eventually, for our this section with our trading, we'll have a chapel and cemetery and a hospital. Wool coats? No, thank you. How about some seeds? Do you have seeds? Sheep? No. But thanks for stopping by. What about you? Chickens, no thank you. Um, basically, I just have this one pasture um, of chickens, and I won't split these or expand them in any way. Um, it, basically, it's just to provide a little bit of food variety, and, and I like the chickens. I know a lot of people find the noise annoying, but I don't. It seems like every farm should have some chickens at least, right? Let's see, what else? Those houses might be getting built, it looks like. It's queue up this one as well. And there's going to be a marketplace eventually there. Good. 
What is that saying? Three more houses? Let's unpause this one. And again, I keep the houses pinned just to make sure that the couples moving in are who I want. Double check that I'm not breaking up any families or having single poop people move into these houses. Actually, that road is wrong. And I'm going to put a blacksmith down here because one, it is close to a marketplace. Um, so it'll have all the materials it needs being supplied by the marketplace. But it's also close to these stockpiles. And since I'll, I buy iron and coal and everything from the traders. There's usually uh, huge stockpiles of goods once near my trading posts once the town starts get going. So this way they have a chance to use some of the coal for steel tools before everyone else grabs it. I really need to set some camera presets for back here. So, good, good. Two houses. Maybe one more back here. our chapel. Very nice. And as people are born back here, um, even they'll start uh, filling up this chapel, even though we're nowhere near filling up this one yet. Let's clear out some of these trees. Make it look a little civilized back here. We're going to up the speed. actually like playing at a lower speed. When you play at a high speed, um, you're constantly playing catch up. You need to constantly be building and expanding. But when you play at a lower speed, it just it makes the game uh, more enjoyable, I've found. see what you have here. Uh, food. And you have food that we don't want. So let's change this so it only brings orchard and crops. Everything else is either more expensive, which we don't want, 
or we'll produce enough of it on our own. So every visit, there's one. Uh, dismiss you, thank you. I have chickens. And food, no, general goods. Oh, what am I doing over here? Okay, not steel tools. Venison, please. Okay, and we have no, nothing to trade right now. Cattle, no thank you. There's a good one. And let's buy their food and iron. Oh, well, that's going to be too much. And three mushrooms. Okay. The iron. 330. How much is that? Gosh. Um, I don't know. 75? 85? No. 82 83 and two more mushrooms okay. dismiss you good good and our population is up to 121 already this is going to continue to grow and grow and this is why people find themselves in problems with starvation and tool shortages and everything everything seems to be going really well but you start expanding so fast that that if you're initial infrastructure isn't efficient enough, uh, you can easily run into some problems. And just to avoid that, we're going to bump up our gatherers just a little bit, get some more extra food. Uh, it'll be nice when we have some crops. This is looking good. Let's do three more houses down here. And in case you're wondering, I'm looking at the the homes to families and that's how I'm determining my houses right now uh mm, no thank you I'm interested in corn or wheat since they're the grains that we're lacking or beans right now and beans because they grow the fastest um, one other thing with marketplaces is they stock what you have the most of food wise they each have a certain limit for um, tools and clothes and uh, resources and the like like that but food wise they stock what you have the most of so we'll put these by quantity so you'll see we have 12,000 fish right now and we have 15,000 or 1500 fish in the marketplace so you can take advantage of that. No, thank you. You can take advantage of that by um, by stocking in an abundance of the four food groups. So I am going to have a huge stockpile of fish, wheat for our grain, beans for our vegetables, and apples for the fruit. 
That's my goal. It's going to take a while before that happens. But I want a huge quantity of those four foods so the four basic food groups are always available in the marketplace. Anything after that, uh, food variety wise, is just nice. But my main goal is to um, produce a lot of wheat, a lot of beans, a lot of apples, and a lot of fish. And that'll keep everybody happy, healthy, as well as happy. And then everything else is just for flavor and because it looks nice. I get a kick out of uh, looking at a house that has like a lot of things, which is this one does not. <laughs> okay, there goes that theory. Well, eventually we'll have we'll have nice things. Oh, nomads. Nomads and mines are suckers' pets, and we will not be inviting any nomads. Um, they bring disease, they're uneducated, and they cause wild um, population fluctuations. So not only do you have to have enough, enough food, coats, and tools to to deal with the initial population, you also should double that number um, because you're going to have a a growth spurt soon after you accept nomads. Um, they can be a fun challenge, but they add nothing to nothing to your city. Um, the very first building that we built on this map was a schoolhouse. I'm not going to go ahead and ruin my 100% educated um, in order to get a few nomads that are going to take my things and possibly bring disease. It's just not worth it. I could see a few um, legitimate needs for, for nomads. Maybe if you have a natural disaster and most of the population that you have left is older. Um, might be a good a good time to accept some nomads, but just during normal gameplay. I don't see the reason for them. Well, they're fun. And I remember my first map, I was so excited to see nomads come. Because you just look at, um, and you're like, oh, I could have this many laborers. But even though it's still uh, relatively early, labor is not a concern for the city. We're expanding as fast as we possible as we possibly can. And there are so many schoolhouses, everyone is graduating at usually uh, the 16 to 17 year old mark. And, and since I'm not wasting a ton of labor on farms or mines, it really frees up, frees up a lot of laborers and la they're just not the concern that that they are for a lot of other people. Well, from what I've seen, I love Spanish Let's Plays. I love to see how everyone else plays. So that's a common theme that I see is nobody ever has enough laborers. And very happy to get some wheat seeds here. I think we might uh, plant those. I wonder if we... It's going to be too early right now, but we can... Uh... Oh. And 
we'll put eight farmers on. Hopefully that'll even out to two a field. Eventually. Two, 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 two. Good. It's already spring though, so who knows how much we'll get for those. Okay, no thank you on the sheep. I'm very happy with the uh, wheat. I think I think this might be a good place to um, to end this episode so it doesn't get too long. We built our marketplace and it is carrying a sufficient amount of goods. We got a new cemetery, chapel, and hospital up back here. We're just about ready to add a couple more forest nodes. We're filling out more of this section. And we have all of our livestock now. We'll go ahead and split some more of these herds. And we've built up part of our trade our trading dock and year 20 and we find year 21 and we finally got some crop seeds so I'm looking forward to uh, to having that hopefully bean seeds will be along shortly okay thanks for watching and we'll be back with episode 7